But we're trying to have conversations in different parts of the country that don't usually get to be part of the political conversation leading up to an election year and talk about some things that don't usually get talked about even in election years. And we thought that this would be a perfect topic to discuss when we're here in the Twin Cities for a lot of not only political reasons, but also cultural reasons. America. I was in the middle of America, left and right, thinking, you know, uh, what the future is going to bring to me. And uh, with, I was fortunate to have sponsors who are mainly from Virginia. And, and uh, you know, one thing I remember from them is they told me that we will help you if you can help yourself. And I said, well, how can I help myself? I'm new here. I'm, I'm here in a few weeks. And they said, you know, it's not that. We will help you if you show us that you're looking for a job. You're going to wake up every morning and look for a job. If you want to go to school, you wake up every morning and go to school. Then we will help you. We will get involved with your life. So when I came here, I, like, forgot all my Arabic, but I'm, like, speaking fluent English now. So, yeah. So you really she, Americanized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wish my English teacher in Somalia could hear me now. Like, I, I remember, like, there was, like, I had friends in school, but I don't remember how I was communicating with them. And it's just, like, that childhood, like, innocence that goes on, like, and that just goes on with, like, being a child. And one of the th main things is, like, you know, when you grow up and you, like, start to process what's going on, I didn't, I didn't know I was black until I came to America. And it's weird, but I didn't know I was black before I came to America. I knew I was a practicing Muslim. I knew I was a woman. I knew, like, I knew the things, but I didn't know I was black until I came to America. So that cultural line was new for you when you got here. Yeah, yeah. Things happen, I think, sometimes for a reason. And um, you get to a point uh, where you're like, first, when you come here, you're like, why are all these people not you know, why are they complaining about racism? Why are they complaining about being stereotyped? I mean, they can get a job, they can get a car, they can do all these things, I can do whatever, you know? And you got that swagger, like you're just a new guy and you're like, I wanna work, I wanna do this. And then you get into a world and then the reality hits you on the face and you're like, <laughs> just another black person that has come to the US and that all these opportunities, someone is standing on the way either directly or indirectly, and you can clearly see that. The American dream and what being American meant was being less Somali, and letting go a bit of my culture so I can fit in more at school. Maybe for me, what, be, what, meant, like, what cool meant was not speaking so much Somali, speaking English more, letting go of that, you know, that little bit of an accent you have when you speak another language. And so that's what, that's, so that's what the American dream meant for me, you know? I wonder if, in a way, being more American meant being more white. Mm. Yeah, you know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, that, that's how I felt. Like, the more, the more white I sound, the more white I act, maybe I could be like them. That's how I felt when I was younger. And of course, as I got older, I was like, no, that's not how you go about things. And I feel like as I left that sheltered, um, that, that younger sheltered me, I, as I went through, navigated through high school and college, I learned to be more comfortable in who I was, in my identity. But what is a Minnesotan before the Somalis came and what is it now? And I would say Minnesota is enriched by the Hmong population that are here, the East African population that has come here. So I'm looking forward to the day when uh, uh, people come to Minnesota and they eat a sambusa, which is a, a triangle filled egg roll that is beautifully delicious called samosa in other places. It is so good. Right? <laughs> we had some before the right. Savannah. Oh, wow. I, 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 I am enjoying this conversation, but I'm eyeing the table. <laughs> right, over right, in the corner. right. And so, like a sambusa would be something that uh, Minnesotans are proud of, and not only that, it's it's a, it would be something Minnesotans share with the rest of the country because of that identity of being part of Somali culture, part of this uh, the Minnesota culture. Minnesota is home. My late husband will say, "We're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We are here." We are here to stay as Minnesotans. But how? And where? And what do we do our younger generation? I have 20 year old and 24 year old. Can I, can, can I add one more? Sure. Uh, Jayla, go ahead. When is uh, coming to America number two, two coming, coming out? out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that That's movie classic. 
It's For a, a lot of us yeah. immigrants, we Africans, relate. we relate so much to it. We really? all, yes. yeah, I mean, Eddie Murphy did a great job on that. And yeah. see, I always thought that Coming to America was one of those movies that was kind of on the bubble because it told our was, story at an early time where people just could not relate to us, and we all wanted to be kings from Africa. That oh, land. And right see, here. I was always worried that, like, you know, you see that movie, and there's like him, like, I have recently been placed in charge of garbage. Yeah. Do, you have any that, yeah. do you have any that requires disposal? I wasn't sure if I was allowed to laugh at that. <laughs>